Hello and welcome to the screencast on M files. In this screencast we're going to learn about script M files, what they are, why we use them in MATLAB, how to create and execute them, and what to do with them once they are made. There will be another screencast about function M files, which are different than scripts. Let's consider the following situation. Suppose I want to make a container that's shaped like a right circular cylinder like you see here. So it has this lateral side area and two circular end caps. And let's also suppose that the whole container is made out of the same material that has a certain cost to it. Suppose I want to find out how much it would cost to build such a thing. Well, mathematically speaking, there are three independent variables in this question, the height of the container, the radius of the container, and the cost of the materials. If we call these three quantities H, R, and C respectively, then this would be our total cost. The first term of that sum is the cost of the end caps, and the second term of the cost is the cost of the side area. So let's go over to MATLAB now and play around with this formula and see what we might need more than just the command window to do this. So in MATLAB, what we need to do is play around with the different values of the three different independent variables that we have in this problem. Let's just make a choice for one set of variables. Let's say C equals 3 for $3 a square foot, H is equal to 10, and R is equal to 4. Now to calculate the cost, I'm just going to enter this in, enter the formula into MATLAB. 2 times C times pi times R squared plus C times 2 times pi times R times H. And there's my cost. But that's just one set of choices for the variables. And what I want to do is to be able to tweak these variables and make different choices and quickly execute the total cost formula once I made a choice. That's pretty hard to do just here in the command window because I have to go back through and define my variables again. And it gets very messy and it's hard to share too. So what we're going to do here is create a file that contains all four of the commands I just executed. The definition of C the definition of H, of R, and then the execution of the total cost formula. This file that contains a list of MATLAB commands, the four commands I've entered in here, is called an M file. Again, in MATLAB, an M file is just a text file that contains a block of MATLAB commands, and it turns out that I can execute all these commands at once. Let's see how we make these things. So in MATLAB, go up to the new file icon here that's up in the upper left corner and click on it, and you'll bring up an editor. This text editor is called the MATLAB editor, and this is where we create our M files. I'm simply going to type in the four commands that I used on the command window here in the file. So C equals 3, H equals 10, R equals 4, and now my formula 2 C pi R squared plus C times 2 pi R H. Now this list of commands is the contents of this M file. I'm going to save this file, so I'm saving a block of commands that I can later share or change or execute however I want. I'm going to click on the disk icon and it will bring up my current directory, which happens to be the MATLAB directory. It might be something different for you. I'm going to give it a name here. Maybe I'll call it total underscore cost. Now just a word about the naming conventions for M files. I cannot use any spaces in the name of an M file, so I can't just say total space cost. So I can either just make it one long word total cost or put an underscore to kind of represent a space. I also can't use any mathematical symbols like the plus sign or the minus sign, so we have to be careful about that. I'm going to click save and it will save this to my current directory and you see here that MATLAB automatically puts a .m extension on the end of this. So any file that ends in a .m is an M file, again, which is just a block of commands. If you did this for the first time, then you might have gotten a dialog box after you saved that asked something about adding your directory to a path. If that's the case, just click yes for now. So once I have this total cost.m file saved, what I can do is execute all four of the commands at once. Now to show you the full force of what's happening here, I'm going to go back into MATLAB and type clear, and that will clear out all the variables in my workspace window, and I'm going to clear the screen with CLC. Everything is cleared and there are no variables defined. If I go over here, I can carry out all four of these commands simultaneously by clicking on this green play button here. If I click this and go back to MATLAB, you see some things have happened. C, H, and R have been defined and here's my answer. And actually C, H, and R are declared as variables over here in the workspace. Going back to the M file, you may not like having the C, H, and R values echoed to the screen like this, and that's the case. We would just suppress the output like we do in the command window by adding semicolons to the end of each line. 
I don't want to add a semicolon to the final line because that would suppress everything and nothing would show up on the command window. I do at least want to see the value of my output here. So this kind of M file is called a script because it's just like a script that an actor would use in a play or a movie. Just a collection of lines that MATLAB is supposed to carry out. There's no interaction or give and take with this script uh, like you would in a regular computer program where you might enter in data here and there. That's called a function M file and that's for a later, a later screencast. Now what's great about M files other than the fact that they're very small is that they're easy to store and share. I can save this M file and email it to my professor or share it with a collaborator and we can both work on the same set of commands at the same time. Um, and they're also very easy to change and tweak and experiment with things. For example, suppose I wanted to try out a different set of values here. Let's go back and clear the screen out with CLC. Suppose I want to try a different set of, of choices for my variables out. Let's say $5 a square inch. Uh, 12 inches high and maybe 2 inches of radius. Just change those three things and click execute again and there's my new cost. I can probably line these up side by side, resize the window, and change the C to my heart's content. 10, 10, and 10. And then click the play button and I get a new cost. So this makes it very easy to go back and try out different values of the variables, execute the commands very quickly and see the results very quickly. Now I made this M file up by hand by simply opening up the editor and typing in the commands uh, myself. But there's another way to make an M file that's pretty slick too. If I go over to the command history window over here, I see all the commands that I've executed in recent history here. And if I see a list of commands that I want to make into a script, I can go over here and highlight them. I see here's one. Let's say I want to take this, 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 and this, those four commands, and make it into an M file. I want to simply highlight one of them, and then control click or command click if you're on a Mac to highlight several of them. I have those four highlighted, and then if I right click, I will get a context menu, and one of the options is create script. And if I click on create script, it opens up another M file and just automatically inserts those commands. Also, you might notice that if you have two M files open at the same time, in the editor, it'll put little tabs down here, and you can tab back and forth between the two of them. Let's close out this M file I just created, since we don't need it, don't save, and back to our original M file. Suppose I want to add some notations or some comments into this M file that I don't want to execute as a command, but I would rather just leave it as a text note for somebody else to think about, say someone I'm collaborating with, or comments if I'm grading an M file, or comments for a professor to read if I'm submitting an M file. Well, you can create comments in an M file I put a couple of blank lines here using the percent symbol. You type in the percent symbol, notice it turns up green. Anything that I type on this line after the percent symbol is just going to show up as a text comment, as a note. So I might put in my name, or I might put a little description of my program. Uh, this calculates total cost of a cylinder. Maybe I'll put another file, another line down here that has my name in it, in my class if I'm M1. And maybe I can put a comment to describe what the variables are, cost per square inch, and so on. One element of good style when doing any kind of scientific computing is to always comment your code. And as I write in code here, different commands for MATLAB, I definitely want to declare my variables, say height and radius, and then calculate total cost. This makes the code that I'm typing in much more human readable. Now if I save that file, back to totalcost.m, it's saved, and if I execute it, those comments don't show up in the results. They're only there for the human beings to read. Now one aspect of the MATLAB interface here that we haven't talked much about is the current folder window. I have that minimized right here in the default view. This shows up like so. I'm going to click this and click this little window here icon here to, to nail it down and see it. And you see it. I have a lot of different M files here in my uh, current my MATLAB directory. If you find yours, I'll go down and find the one that we just made. Uh, totalcost.m, there it is. Uh, you can find M files that you stored and open them and see some information. Notice that if I click, single click on the M file, highlight it, down here in this little window it puts out a, a, little, a little note here. That's actually the first line of comments that I put in in the M file itself. So you can leave a, a single line of comments at the top of an M file that will give you a little description of that M file once you see it in the current folder directory. And if you see an M file and you want to open it, uh, you just double click it and we'll call it the editor with the M file in it. 
So let's recap what we learned. A script m file is a text file that just contains a block of MATLAB commands. I can execute all those commands at the same time by using the green play button in the MATLAB editor. And M files can be created manually, or we can create them by selecting sets of commands from the command history and right-clicking. And finally, M files are easy to save and share and edit for later use. That's all for now, and we'll see lots of M files in the future. Thanks for watching.